Hello and welcome to this week's PvP guide. Today we'll be taking a look at the control points on the legacy of the Faux Fire. So first up we have the Waterfall. This point is located on the far western side of the map and its location, much like its twins on the other side of the map, is an even distance between the two team spawn points. However, because of the way the walls of the bases are laid out, it's often treated as the blue team's near side point. But it's important to know that as the crow flies, there's a minimal difference. There are four entrance points onto the node, and the node itself is slightly raised. The entrances will cause choke points, which as a defender means you can lay down AoE or traps on them. Area of denial skills can also be useful, but due to the number of entrances, don't expect them to keep the opposition at bay for very long. Well angled knockbacks can also be very useful here to keep a player off the node. There is also a raised area at the back of the node and this can provide a good area to hide in to trick the opposition into thinking the node is undefended or to attack in a melee opponent from range. Of course without your presence on the node itself it can be neutralised quickly however using this area can give you the element of surprise and as a result more options to dictate the fight. There is a second raised platform towards the blue side of the map. While it can't be used like the one towards the back, it can be accessed quickly by players approaching from the blue base to give them a raised advantage to attack from. Sight angles from the node are good. You have a clear view of players approaching from the blue base, as well as a reasonably early warning of players coming from mid or red. The second node is the quarry on the far eastern side of the map, and this is the mirror image of the waterfall, so many of the same rules apply. It's evenly situated between the two bases, but this is treated as the red team's back point. It's raised with a number of choke point entrances, the difference here being that the back side of the node does not have any physical barrier, unlike the waterfall. However, it is harder to get around the back of this node in the first place. It has a raised platform to the back as well as the side, which are near enough mirror images of the waterfall, and the line of sight angles are much the same but in reverse. Both of these nodes are pretty equal in their difficulties to attack and defend, making it all fairly balanced. Because of this, much of the control on the Legacy of the Faux Fire comes down to winning team fights and controlling mid. From mid you have easy access to both the side nodes and the enemy base, so you can spread your players where you need to. The middle node is the graveyard and is sometimes called the sanctuary. This node is unlike any of the others we've seen on other maps. Firstly, it's huge, whereas other nodes it's possible to AoE the entire area, here it's much more difficult and players have more room to kite without coming off the node, giving ranged players more options in combat to avoid taking damage. The node is banked on four points by raised areas which give it access to a number of different elevations to fight from. This again gives ranged players a chance to safely stay back and attack players on the node and support their teammates. It's quite difficult to see players incoming while you are on the graveyard, making team communication very important. As we mentioned before, the line of sight angles from the two outside nodes are very good, meaning that they can inform the people on the middle node what's happening. If you are fighting on the middle node, your camera work is also very important. Many players tend to fight with a sort of a top-down view while in combat, especially when they're melee fighters. However, on the central node you need to tilt your camera down a little bit to be able to see around the actual outside area to look out for ranged opponents that could come in and start nuking down on you. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, I'll see you all on Friday when we're back with an advanced guide looking at team setups and strategy on Legacy of the Faux Fire, so stay tuned for that and I'll see you all then.